Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Passions Podcast, Hi. the podcast where we talk about passions, the soap opera passions. I am your regular host, Latara, joined today by the most special guest of all time, my lovely niece, Lanaya. Hi, everybody. It's so great to be here. <laughs> I forced her to be here. No, I didn't. She did not force me. She asked me politely and nicely. Naya's doing me a big, big favor because I didn't have anybody lined up for this week because I didn't really do what I was supposed to do. But that's neither here nor there, is it? All right. So, Naya, this week we watched together. We watched 461 through 465, right? Yes, we did. Uh, actually, oh, we, just finished wa- we just finished watching it. <laughs> it was quite the roller coaster i'll just tell you that yes so naya will you tell everybody about what your experience with passions is like i know it's limited i know what it is but you should you say it in your own words okay well so far passion seems like a very long show that is about a lot of things and so many things happen but at the same time nothing happens (laughs) it's like so weird like they are like like right in between nothing and everything like what is even going on i agree no i agree i agree wholeheartedly <laughs> so what is this show um it's passions baby yeah it's that's passions. passions baby that's also just like how soap operas are like set up so everybody naya is how old are you i'm only 19 years old y'all so naya's only 19 <laughs> so she has never watched a soap opera have you I've watched a little bit of the what's the what's that one called the the bold and the beautiful or something like the that. the bold and the beautiful I've watched a little bit of that but I don't my soap opera knowledge is very limited so yeah yeah so you're you grew up with like Netflix shows yeah. 10 episodes we get everything shows that get to the plot you know like they get to what they're gonna say and then they say it and then they're done yes 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 so anyway we're gonna get right into it this week I literally only have three pages of notes. There's like three lines on a fourth page. Three pages of notes. Everybody ended up at the Hell House this week. And I loved it. I'm not like, I loved it. They were all just centered in the same place. Yeah. I just want to make sure. I just want to let y'all know that my notes are kind of like a mess. So this might be a little like, I don't think it'll be confusing. We can get it. We can get it done. But, um, it's the the format's not going to be quite the same as it normally is where we go from storyline to storyline because everybody's in the same place all the storylines are converging right now, yeah so. and they're all catching each other up on their storylines and everybody's dealing with the hell house but not with the level of urgency that they should have they don't care about these kids y'all they don't give a fuck about these kids and neither do i to be frank like i don't think they deserve to burn in hell but like but if it if it if it be god's will it seems to be god's will because everybody is just like listen we got our own problems to deal with we can't deal with y'all y'all gonna just have to sizzle for a little bit longer okay that's true (laughs) it does seem to be god's will but okay so let's actually start very quickly with the people who aren't at the hell house at the beginning of the week and then talk about how they get to the hell house. So first, let's start with Teresa and Ethan, because they were super easy. So Teresa and Ethan, you don't know this because you didn't see the last week's episodes, <clears throat> but Teresa and Ethan were like getting it on on the pullout sofa uh. at, at Teresa's childhood home. Uh, and then they like saw the lights coming from the Bennett home, went outside realized it was coming from the Bennett home. And then Teresa was like, we should go over there and see what's going on. And Ethan was like, I'm never setting foot in that house. Oh, okay. All right. And then Teresa's like, well, my mother and my brother are over there. We really, I really want to go and check on them and make sure that everything's okay. And Ethan was like, well, I guess I'll go with you just to check on your family, but I don't care about the Bennett's. They'll never be my family. Like, why Why is he so angsty? Like, I get that, you know, his dad hasn't been in the picture his whole life or whatever. But, like, what if something bad's happening? So you're saying, like, you don't care? Also, that is your girlfriend's family. Like, you should care about them. But also, Sam has done nothing to him. That's the thing. That's the kicker that I always come back to. Sam has done nothing, nothing to Ethan. And Ethan, I'm sorry, and Sam had no clue that Ethan was his son. So so Ethan can't be mad that Sam wasn't in the picture. Sam didn't know. Be mad at your mama, which he was mad at her. He was. 
but, but I'm not just saying the same level. I'm just saying not not saying but anyway they do end up going over to the hell house where um they are kind of brought up to speed about what's going on let's very quickly talk about Ivy and Julian who are not at the hell house either so Ivy is in Julian's at the at the mansion Ivy is in Julian's like office looking for a book and she finds a book called Sons and Lovers, which maybe that's a famous book. I don't know. But she was like, it sounds like a weird title. It does. She was she was like, oh, this is quite fitting. It's like, OK, yeah, a little on the nose, if you ask me. But all right, Ivy. So she picks up a book called Lovers and Sons or some shit. And then Julian comes in looking for alcohol for him and Rebecca, who they've been upstairs sexing each other in the most hideous ways possible just disgusting <laughs> i'm glad i missed that yeah and um so he comes in for the brandy doesn't realize she's there and then turns around sees her and he's just like oh ivy i don't know he sees her and then they just have a, a back and forth argument she throws a glass of brandy in his face he tells her he's not gonna hit her because he doesn't want her her to have anything to use in court against him and then like doesn't he like just start slut shaming her oh hard hard <laughs> whore he's like you're the whore of the town <laughs> the word whore was used profusely in this yes scene. like that was throwing whores and and hoes and all this other stuff at each other whores <laughs> hoes and sluts <laughs> for real seriously and well because he calls her like the whore of harmony and then i think he actually calls her the harlot of harmony and then calls her a whore and then really she, mixing it up with that one and then she basically is like you should talk you've been up there fucking that whore rebecca and then he turns around and is like well a woman should be a little bit of a whore for her for his or her man and i'm like okay so a whore is bad or good now <laughs> you decide is it only good when it benefits you Exact, <laughs> exactly exactly mm -hmm. so yes they have this little argument um and then ivy i actually do want to get into this i um a little bit because Ivy brings up how horrible Julian is as a person. <laughs> it's like she she brings up the fact that he raised Ethan and he definitely loved him in his own way, but then ca has just cast him out, cast him aside, and acts like he doesn't even exist anymore. And like the way that he's treated Ethan. And Julian is clearly a little like Julian does love Ethan. We can see he has a heart in this scene. A little bit. Like a little yeah, heart. Julian does love Ethan. And so it was it was kind of nice to see them bring that up again about how Julian isn't just a complete horrible evil man. But anyway, he get he clear he quickly gets over it. Oh yeah, he switches <laughs> yeah. quickly. He's like your bastard means nothing to me. Something like that. Yeah. Yours and Sam Bennett's bastard means nothing to me. Also, let's not forget about how um, Ivy brought up that thing with him and Sheridan because he's also been treating Sheridan like trash, trying to break up her and Luis. So. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> well, she really brings him to task on this. He says, he says, what about Sheridan? I mean, she says, what about Sheridan? Look, look at how you've treated Sheridan. He's like, what about, she's like, what about the promise you made to your mother on her deathbed? to always take care of Sheridan and to always protect Sheridan. Look how you, actually, I wrote this one down. <laughs> Look how you have taken care of Sheridan. Shame on you, Julian. How you can live with yourself is beyond me. I'm so glad that I have my son and that he's not your son. Fuck you. She didn't say that last part. That was she me, should have, that was the subtext. She should have said it. That was the subtext. She said it with her eyes. Um. So, in the midst of this, Pilar then calls from the Hell House, and she says, hey, Ethan is in danger. You should really get over here. And then she proceeds to disappear from the plot. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Pilar, Pilar really, did, like, she's there for a little bit, and then she disappears. And we'll talk about that more, because Naya literally at one point was like, where's Pilar? And I was like, yeah, where the fuck is it? It's been like an episode and a half since we heard anything from her. She <laughs> two full episodes, and she was gone. Poof. Yeah, but anyway, um, so Pilar calls, makes her final call. No, Pilar, <laughs> Pilar calls Ivy, tells her Ethan's in danger. You need to get over to the Bennett home. 
Ivy hangs up. She tells Julian that was Pilar. She just said that Ethan is in danger. And there's a little glimmer from Julian where he goes, Ethan's in danger. What kind of? And then he catches himself. He's like, not my fucking problem. And then mm-hmm. he gets his drink and he goes up back up the stairs to Rebecca. He catches his feelings. Yeah. Well, yeah. And throws know. him out the window. Poor thing. Not poor thing, but but poor thing. Who's like, a he's, poor thing? Julian, you don't know because you haven't been watching him. You oh. don't know anything about how, how badly he's been like abused by his father. Oh. Like he just is he he he's a villain. Is he tragic? But he mm, sympathetic. Know, call it. There's certain things that make me say, I understand why Julian is the way that he is. If that makes sense. You like just, you don't excuse it. But it's like, damn, he is really fucked up. You understand why, how he ended up the way he did. Yeah, you're like, damn, Alistair really fucked him up. And he <laughs> won't even show his face. <laughs> he won't even show his face. Okay, so Ivy leaves and goes over to the Bennett home. So let's talk about uh, what's going on at the Bennett home. Let's start with all this magic stuff and what's going on over there. So the Bennett house has been taken over by evil evil yeah we got the the hell hole has opened up fully and demons are just flying loose exactly demons are like flying out of the windows like into harmony so that's just i don't i don't know what what we're gonna do about that like is that ever gonna come up that the town is being overrun with demons i'm honestly i hope it does because if it does then like that's continuity for the show that i can appreciate it's not gonna happen (laughs) (laughs) just let you know right now don't get my hopes up don't get your little hopes up so um, the demons are flying out all over the place. Tabitha does her little catching us all up on the plot thing. And she tells Timmy that, uh, you know, those kids are fucking doomed. The only way that they can be saved is by the demon's claw. And then she shows him the demon's claw that she somehow has possession of. We don't know how she's she like, it. this is a, the, a extremely powerful tool. Which, if it's so powerful, it seems like she would be able to use it to get her powers back. Exactly. I don't know. It seems like she wouldn't. I mean, she knows all these different spells. Seems like she would know how to harness its power to get her powers back. Instead of having to do this weird roundabout way. Yeah. Like, Instead of having to worry about Charity and Miguel being dead to get her powers back, maybe she could have just used this extremely powerful demon's claw. But I don't know. Who am I? Who am I? Which rules, I guess. Hey, yeah, you know, what are the rules? There are none. The rule <laughs> they make and break rules as often as I change underwear. That is which is every day. Which is I don't try, don't play me, don't try me. I didn't it's say every nothing. day. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> no, so anyway. Um, she tells her um Timmy about the demon's claw and says that it would give charity the power to free herself and everyone else from hell. And then um, Tabby and Timmy can hear the kids screaming from her little hell portal in her basement because she's got a hell portal portal in her basement as well. And Timmy just like can't bear the thought of losing Charity. And we get a Timmy and Charity memory montage. That was the creepiest thing I ever saw. I hate their little like romance. I can't even call it a romance. It's one-sided. She doesn't even know he's alive. Like it's actually less than one-sided. There is like only... There's it's zero sided. <laughs> she doesn't even really exist. Yeah, she doesn't even really exist. She doesn't know he's alive. Like I, I, that was weird. It was very weird. We got all of every single moment that Charity and Timmy have shared, which I didn't realize were so many. It was like two minutes long. That's where they had the montage, you know, to catch you up to remind me mm-hmm. that yes, these two people have had contact. <laughs> They've been been in contact. Um, and also a lot of them were actually Timmy's like, now that I think about it, a lot of them were actually Timmy's like, um, imagination. They were his fantasies. Even worse. Like there was one when he was in like the John Travolta outfit and there was one, I don't know. There was several where there was one where she was in like a red dress. Like that didn't happen, but there, they also showed the prom boat, which I forgot about where she picked Timmy up and started dancing with him, which was weird. Cause she's a weird girl. Yeah, Charity's what, a weird girl. What, what's the context behind that? Did she just decide, hey, I'm gonna just play with this doll? Basically, yeah. She was like, Oh, Timmy, I don't I don't know. I don't know. She started dancing with the doll at the prom because she's a weird girl. Wow. But anyway. She's going in weird places too. Yeah. So um 
we get the montage. Timmy's little wheels are spinning. You know, he's like, I can't let Charity die. I can't, you know, and now Tapta has given given him the way to save her. Like, explicitly in all of its details, like, she doesn't leave anything out. She makes it extremely easy for him if he wanted to, which I feel like is an oversight on her part. Because doesn't she, like, kind of know that Timmy likes Charity? Oh, she definitely knows. So, like, what? I think she feels she just like overconfident in the fact that Timmy would never betray. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Oh. I think she, which she shouldn't be, because he has like helped in other situations before. But and he's like shown that he's actually good and not evil. Oh. Um, but she, I think she just refuses to accept it or see it. Oh. Yeah, yeah, well, that's like a pretty big oversight on my part. I mean, on her part. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, so. <clears throat> Inside of the hell house, let's go over to the hell house. Everything is collapsing. The roof is falling in. The the, the whole house is like shaking. Honestly, the amount of ceiling and roof that collapses and falls to the ground in this episode, there really shouldn't have been any left to fall by like the third episode, but it just kept falling. It just keeps falling. And they it gets kept worse. Fall, throw, like the same piece of roof <laughs> kept falling. They kept throwing it up so it could fall down <laughs> yeah. again. <laughs> Yeah, the exact same piece just kept falling down to the ground. Um, but they it so at, the people who are in the house at this point are Sam, Lou, actually it's a lot of people. It's better to just say who aren't there. Teresa and Ethan aren't there yet. Um, Ivy's not there yet. Is that it? Uh, I think that's it. Doesn't uh doesn't Chad go in at some point? Chad's Chad, Chad and Whitney aren't there yet. Yeah, they're not there yet. Everybody else is. Ch- everybody else is. Oh, we forgot to talk about Chad and Whitney. It, you know what? I'm going to just say it really quickly. They were like out on the roof listening to music. Oh, boy. <laughs> not, oh, Naya. <laughs> I explained to her that Chad and Whitney right now in the story, it is canon that they are brother and sister, that they are half brother and sister. Like it has been stated explicitly that they are siblings. And every time they kissed, she was just like, Whoa. because like, ew, <laughs> I feel like, I don't know. I haven't seen that much of the show, but like, were they like kissing a lot before like the reveal was found out? Because like right now I feel like they are kissing a lot for someone that are brother and sister. I know that they don't know, but the audience knows. Right. So like, what are we supposed to be getting out of that? You know, like, I, don't, I don't like it. I I agree. I know what you I know what you're saying. I think because I do know that they're not actually brother and sister, it doesn't bother me as much. But I think upon first watch, it probably did bother me a lot. I I do remember thinking it was so weird. It is weird. Weird. But um, and just yeah, every time they kiss, every time once they explained that they were brother and sister, I I, I do think I was like, oh my god, Stop kissing your brother. <laughs> Oh my god. But um yeah, so they see the lights from the roof and I'm not even gonna they make up some bullshit about her staying home for the tennis match and some bullshit. But she ends up at the house anyway, so I'm not even gonna really get into it, okay? Every all the all of the Russells end up at the Bennett house. Simone, oh, Simone is the one who called, which I think I said this last episode, but we got a new Simone. It's Christy Ferris is the the actress who plays her beautiful girl she's not quite in the pocket of simone yet it's like i i'm gonna have to get i think maybe i just need to get used to you just gotta get used to this new simone yeah i think maybe i just need to get used to her um but lord she is she she plays that delusion very well she is extremely delusional and it makes me sad because (laughs) her parents obviously already don't care about her because she's the forgotten child so and now we're she's dating chad and who is also her brother like they have two sisters fighting over their brother this incest plot (laughs) for like three years that's insanity wait so you know what i'll just wait and see all right all right so everybody ends up at the hell house um so inside sam finally suggests i'm telling you this house is shaking everything the walls are falling down the ceiling keeps collapsing sam the chief of police finally suggests that everybody evacuate the fucking house 
He was like, yeah, we should probably not be in here. And so he mm-hmm. he sends the women out. He sends Reese out with the women. He's like, Reese, get the girls out of here. Because, you know, women are just made of glass. We're just so fragile. Hey, look, I wouldn't have been in that house. But nobody should have been in that house. Uh, that Either is true. The men or the women. <laughs> Very true. But I'd rather the men be in there than me. <laughs> and that's what I'm going to say about that. Okay? <laughs> like, like I told you yesterday, I have no... I have no real reason for it because I told you that I don't get up to give up my seat oh, yeah, when, I'm on, the, when yeah. I'm on the train or the bus, I especially on the train. I do not give up my seat for, I shouldn't say this. I'm going to say, I don't give up my seat for like elderly people. Um, if... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. There's a lot of men sitting down. Like, what they, all these men one of these men need to get up one of these men need to get up why do i have to get up and naya was like well but why yeah i just i just want to know why like i'm not saying you know you have to agree or disagree but i just wanted to know the reasoning and guess what she had no reasoning there was none <laughs> because i am a woman and this is one part of the patriarchy I buy into. No, okay? no, that's not how that works. It's all or nothing. You have to get, either get rid of all of it or you keep all of it. <laughs> Arbitrary thing that you keep just because you like it. <laughs> it benefits me. I want to know if the patriarchy benefits <laughs> Nah, actually, I usually, like, somebody gets up like if it was an old person and they were standing and nobody would get up i would get up but i do person. wait <laughs> you wait to see any takers just to see if anybody else gets wait. up i've been looking down at my phone like <laughs> pretend like i don't see them for a minute and maybe somebody else will give you this you know people are tired you're tired you're sitting down for a reason i'm just saying and i have on the train especially like on the bus like yesterday i got up for that old man did i not she did and you know who didn't get up me <laughs> you sure didn't let you just let that old man hold that little girl in his lap <laughs> she got legs she got legs listen to you <laughs> she's right she okay the thing about old people is like old people you know they finna die you know so like they all you know i don't mean it like that but like you know so they breaking down you know so they need somewhere to sit little kids they just got here i have priority over you you are a little kid unless it's like they're like really tired or something or like they about to fall down but like usually like kids are okay and she agrees with me she said the same thing she don't oh, get up I, do agree. Either. I do agree i do agree i do agree i don't get up for kids like y'all you got like you said you got legs I, no i don't get up for people's kids your legs just got here too your legs fresh i didn't healthy. i didn't i didn't have those babies that's not my responsibility it's not that's not on me but anyway Yes, I got up for the old man yesterday. So I just want to be clear that I do get up if I need to. I got up but I try too. my best not to. I got up eventually too when it was time to leave. And so the kid got to sit down when I left. Anyway, <laughs> so I don't know why the fuck we were talking about that. Because we were oh, talking because about, yeah, the, the women leaving the house. Yes, yeah. they had the women leave the house, which I agree with. Women and children first. They don't care about the children. Get out. They, they don't. Did, they would have been rescued already. They still burning in hell, they, as far as we know. They do not care about those kids, and neither do I, to be honest. Anyway, so uh, Sam, the chief of police, who is so bad, so bad at his job, terrible, mm. finally suggests everybody uh, get out. Uh, Grace, Grace says, evil is trying to kill us. Okay, Grace. Yeah, I mean. I agree. Yeah, she said it a couple of times. Evil is trying to kill us. Just leave, Grace. No, she. I get it though. Her daughter and her niece are in hell. Actually, let me give Grace some grace. Grace some grace. I'm giving Grace a little grace, but she does say evil is trying to kill us. And then, um, nobody wants to leave the house. All the women want to stay with their men because Sheridan's there with Louise, and uh, Grace is there with Sam, and yeah whoever else whoever else is there at the time I, it's so many people everyone is just there and like, or it ends up there at some point reese is there um jessica's still there and simone is still there too but uh re- eventually um we hear sam like insists sam insists that the women 
and the children get out and we hear a demon yelling, hell, come to us, come with us to hell, come with us to hell. And that does prompt those ladies to be like, you know what, maybe we should get out. Yeah, maybe we should leave. Maybe we should leave. I'm not really sure what the demon was trying to do there because like anyone who has like two brain cells would immediately leave. Yeah. Who's going to just be like, oh yeah, let me just go to hell Yeah, you, oh, that know? sounds fun. Yeah. yeah. Sounds nice. nice Is it like a spa? spa. Yeah. A sauna. I heard it's warm there. <laughs> I heard it's very warm this time of year yeah. and all year round. Is that yeah, true? It's like perfect. My skin. <laughs> it's perfect barbecue weather. Um, so Sam and Luis are the only two who stay behind because TC hasn't shown up yet at this point. Sam and Luis stay behind to try to save the kids from hell. Uh Reese, this was weird. Uh, Sam tells Reese to guide the women out of the house. This is Grace's house. This is Jessica's house. They know how to get out of the house. Also, it's a house. Yeah, I could. I yeah, we could get out of the house. Like anyone can find the exit. If you made your way in, you can make your way out. Exactly. Yeah, so I don't so know what that was about. It was weird that they were like Reese needs to guide you out. Maybe they were low key just telling Reese to leave. Well, yeah. Well, Reese was also being mad annoying, talking about the Vatican website. He's like, the Vatican <laughs> website says on my Palm Pilot, pilot that anyone who has been touched by the flames of hell will never be back and will never be released. And like, he was just saying a lot of stuff that was not helpful. Yeah, like real helpful, Reese. That's why you need to leave. Go guide the women. Get out, you geek. <laughs> Nerd boy. <laughs> Nerd boy. <laughs> That's what Tabitha calls him, right? Yeah. Um. So Reese guides everyone out. And then Chad and the Russells, that's when they show up. And Teresa and, e Teresa and Ethan also show up. And they're all brought up to speed on what's going on. Ethan refuses to believe it. Even though we're seeing demons fly out of this house. There's like a red glow around it. It's shaking. What more will it take to convince you, man? He does not believe it. But everybody's like, no, we all saw it. Like literally all of us saw it. And... Um, the men folk go inside to help Chad, TC and Ethan go inside to help reinforcements. Um, I want to talk about what I want to stay outside for a moment though. The girls stay outside and talk and, uh, they all re relay what's going on to Whitney. Right. And Simone and Simone says some very delusional shit about her and Chad's relationship. Oh, like going on dates. Yeah, she's I, she just says a lot of like. Well, first she says she talks about how she tells Chad before he goes back in the house. She says she apologizes to him for not being around very much, and I would like to know where the fuck she's been because she talks about how she's been so busy, and she has been gone for many many episodes now. We haven't seen her in a long like, time. What have you been busy with, girl? Truly, what have you been busy with? Because Kay is her whole life. K is her whole life. He, K is her social life. So I don't know what she's been. And K's in hell. What have you been busy with? Maybe I guess she. she I guess she's been busy with trying to get K out of hell. I guess. But this has only been a day. I don't know. She says she's been busy. She just and she tells Chad that you know we're gonna be going on dates and I'm so you know I'm glad that you're here and I want to hug you and all of this and stuff. She, on Chad for not saying anything. Yeah, Chad really needs to just step up, speak up, say something, break a heart, whatever you need to do. Like, yes, say something. I'm giving up on you. Say something for real, because like this girl is very deluded, and you need to just wake her up so we can all move on, and she can move on hopefully, and everybody can get along. Yeah. So while Simone is saying like these delusional things to Chad before he goes in the house. Teresa and Whitney like are talking to oh you know what it is Whitney's not there yet Whitney's on the phone that's why I was like well, how is how is Simone saying all these delusional things but Whitney isn't picking up on it and I just remembered Whitney was still at home on the phone because they left oh, her there yeah yeah, 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 yeah get some sleep for her tennis match and we haven't seen this girl in a tennis court in I don't know how long but apparently it's still so important to her but anyway so Teresa's on the phone with Whitney, bringing her up to speed. Meanwhile, Simone is saying all her delusional things to Chad. That is how that played out. So on the phone, Teresa and Whitney start talking about sex. Let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> Let's talk about you and me. They are on the phone talking about sex at a time like this. But let's be honest, like, 
like like you said, like I've said, no one cares about these kids. They just going off on these little side tangents. Nobody cares. I think at some point, Chad and Simone start having coffee in this <laughs> nondescript location. I don't even know where they was at. They was just drinking coffee over there, hugging, and she was still being delusional. Yeah. But anyway, let's go back to them talking on the phone. Yeah, they start talking about sex randomly on the phone, and uh, Teresa says that she she and Ethan were about to have sex, basically, and she doesn't know if she can wait. <laughs> she doesn't know if she can wait for it. And then Whitney starts talking about how, like, you know, maybe she's having those same kind of feelings for Chad, but they didn't do anything. And then Sheridan is overhearing or eavesdropping yeah. on this phone she call as if she doesn't have anything more important to be doing right now. But um, she l- tells... <laughs> Teresa, she's like, I couldn't help but hear, overhear what you were talking mm-hmm. about. And I really just think that it's so important to wait. You should really just wait. But meanwhile, she and Louise have been fucking non stop. Like, she should be ashamed, really. Stop. And I, she didn't exactly say you should wait till marriage, but that was, it was heavily implied. Yeah. Because that's what Teresa was talking about. So it's like heavily implied. It's like you and Luis aren't married. She was like, I wish I had waited. Like, you're going to be, you'd be so much happier if you just waited till marriage. All this, like, this, that, and the other. Meanwhile, like you said, her and, what's her name? Che- oh, uh, Luis. Her and Luis have been smashing, like, no tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> They've been smashing. Come on, girl. Yeah, so, mm, whatever. Uh, She's been having copious amounts of premarital sex, but she doesn't want anybody else to have any. Okay. So anyway, as the house begins to crumble, all the ladies outside start saying the Lord's Prayer. (laughs) And they're all praying. Then Reese, who has been like on his Palm Pilot and being generally unhelpful or (laughs) useful at all, he like notices that Tabitha is like sitting outside of, sitting outside on her lawn in like a chair with like popcorn. I don't know if she had popcorn, but she was clearly like watching it like a show. And he takes issue with this. And he flat out calls her a witch. Yeah, just walks up to her, storms up to her, and is, like, um, accusing her of being a witch and, like, saying, well, if you're not a witch, how come I never see you at church? What church do you go to? Say a prayer right now or else you're a witch. Say it right now, woman. (laughs) Exactly. And to get out of this, Tabitha fakes a, like, a fainting spell. And also, Teresa is telling Reese, like, to back the fuck off. He's like, she's an old, weird old lady. Just leave her alone. Like stop it and uh tab the tab the fakes like a fainting spell so then Teresa, whitney because whitney has now shown up she was heard about what's going on on the phone she came across the street because that they live so close to each other i don't know how she didn't realize that the house was crumbling mm-hmm. they were sitting out on the roof and they literally they made a note like they noted the weird red aura when they were sitting on the roof she should be able to see the bennett house from her home they live that close to each other. That I was under that impression. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Whatever. To, this girl has shown up. Whitney has shown up. So right when Reese is accusing uh, Tabitha of being a witch, he says, Tabitha's an evil witch. I mean, really just comes out and says it. Mm-hmm. All right. With his whole chest. He really did. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. But the way he's going about this is, like, imagine if she was just a weird old lady. Yeah. And his his evidence his evidence is so bad yeah he just happens to be right unless he has other evidence i don't know yeah to be fair to reese about his evidence he he thinks and has he has they they they've gaslit him a little bit on this he knows that timmy is alive like he has seen timmy walking he's seen timmy talking but they've like explained it away in the story he also like at one point tabitha was a fish and <laughs> okay hold on so this lady got turned into a fish yes this lady got turned into a fish <laughs> um and then at one point she turned into like a mermaid so like her bottom half of her body was like a fish tail and the part the then like her torso and up wasn't so she had like a blanket over her and he like was adamant tabitha is a fish tabitha is a mermaid like he was trying to like get the blanket off of her and then he he didn't get the proof but he he knew he knew he knew it's been a lot he has had a lot of suspicions about tabitha leading up to this and has have have noticed a lot of 
um, irregularities surrounding Tabitha. So I, I will give him this. I will give him that he has figured out that she is a witch. Okay, so... All right. Yeah, I don't know. He, I know he knows. Uh, yeah, because she obviously is a witch. Why didn't he? Br- I guess he didn't bring up any of the other stuff. Yeah, no, because they'd already explained it away. Yeah, and so they would just be looking at him crazy, like, "What do you mean? We already explained. She's not a fish. You're just crazy, Reese. Right? Exactly. Crazy nerd. <laughs> nerd boy. <laughs> um. So the girls take Tabitha over into her house, and when they get there, she decides that she wants to like play some tricks on them. And she tries to get them to stay at the house. They, sorry. So she says, you know, why don't I get us some tea and some cookies? I can read your tea leaves, read your girl's fortunes. Sheridan and Whitney are not with it. Like at all. They're like, no, we should probably get back over to the Bennett home. There's a lot going on over there. I'm worried about our, we're worried about our men, yada, yada, yada. Makes sense, right? Old task at hand. Teresa, our lovable, lovable lunatic. This girl's a lunatic. Teresa was like, well, we can see the Bennett home from here. <laughs> Why should it matter? We're safer in here. Because she wants to get her fortune read again. Like, she, this girl has had her fortune read so many times at this point. And it's always kind of the same thing. You will become Mrs. Crane, right? Um. So anyway, they decide to stay. Tabitha reads Teresa's tea leaves and predicts that she will become Mrs. Crane. Teresa fully ignores the fact that Ethan is no longer a crane. That's a huge plot point, right? Actually, yeah, that is a that that would make you start to think like, huh, well, how can I be a crane if the guy that I'm engaged to is not a crane anymore? So it's like it comes down to you either put stock in this or you don't. But she does, and if you do then this fortune is bad for you. But she just assumes that the fortune means Ethan. And Whitney brings up the, Whitney and Sheridan both bring up the fact that Ethan is not a crane. Like, how is this fortune accurate? Like, how do you, it's not an accurate fortune if you're going to marry Ethan. But all you viewers know who she marries. Naya does not. (laughs) Oh, so something yeah, it's, I mean, it's alluding into things. It's mm-hmm. alluding to a marriage that does ha- that does happen very soon, um, and by very soon, I mean in the next like hundred episodes. That is not soon <laughs> for this show. It is I in, in a hundred episodes. We will have moved. How many episodes does the show have? Uh, thousands. I think it's like two. It can't. Maybe it's two thousand and something. It's like two thousand something episodes. It came on five days a week for eight for eight years. From 1999 to 2008. I guess that does make sense. Then. Yeah. Wow, that's Tons a lot of episodes. episodes. Yeah. So, um, anyway, she ignores the fact that this uh, fortune. fortune, thank you, that this fortune says that she will be Mrs. Crane and is thrilled. Then Tabitha predicts a double wedding. And so then she's like, oh, that must be one of you ladies which girl which one of us is getting which one of them is getting married with me which is i I still she's so obsessed with this double wedding concept exactly i still can't get over the fact that she is like into the idea of a double wedding because for me and i think for you too the idea of a wedding is supposed to be you and your spouse's special day and a double wedding is literally like kind of undermining that like it just defeats the purpose of a wedding like now you have to share your special day with these other two people i don't know i just find it weird yeah but didn't she say like she was trying to like convince uh ethan to do this because she was like the price would be a lot lower because they yeah the, a few it. episodes ago you yeah. saw those yeah i saw those yeah i was like kind of there yeah. yeah yeah she Teresa is a lunatic so When Tabitha predicts this double wedding and Teresa's like pressing this issue with Sheridan and Whitney, Whitney's like, well, it can't possibly be me because Chad and I have not even been on a date yet. And I agree. Mm -hmm. It can't possibly be Whitney. And Whitney's like, I'm leaving. And so she leaves. She goes back out to the hell house and whatever. I actually know where Whitney goes because she leaves and later she comes back by herself all by herself but whatever it doesn't matter because after she leaves Tabitha then predicts for Sheridan looks in Sheridan's tea leaves and says that she sees her on a sunny beach with Luis a sunny beach with Luis and that's what she sees in her tea leaves 
Teresa immediately jumps and says, it must be your honeymoon in Spain. And Sheridan's like, sure, okay. Like, I don't know where she got Spain from. I think Tabitha oh. did, like, leave the little breadcrumb that, like, it's going to be a foreign country. But I don't think she said anything about Spain. So if she said it was going to be a for foreign country, then they have talked about having their honeymoon in Spain. Oh, okay. Yeah. They've talked about it. So that's, yeah. okay, so she's not totally crazy. I mean, no. she's still crazy, but. She's totally all out of her mind. That little piece made sense. So I will give her that. Yeah. So that's Sheridan's prediction, though, it, of course, Tabitha's like voiceover is like, ha 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 ha, you are interpreting this in one way, but you're in for a world of hurt. Yeah, so. Because it actually goes this way. That's actually really terrible for you. But I'm not telling <laughs> yeah. you that. Yeah. Um, at one, so we're going to go ahead and talk about the fact that Whitney comes back since we're talking about these tea leaves. Whitney comes back after Teresa and Sheridan have gone. I don't know how whatever it happened. reason. I don't know why. I, 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 it is not explained. She comes back. She overhears Tabitha like jumping for joy and like talking about somebody's gonna be dead. And like, <laughs> she comes in and is like, "What the fuck was that, Tabitha?" And Tabitha's like, "Oh, it's just, just some um jump rope rhyme." I'm sorry, y'all. My Tabitha is so bad. <laughs> Just some jump rip rhyme that I used to jump to when I was a kid, when I was a child. And um, makes zero sense. And Whitney uh, rightfully calls her out on that. Like, what do you mean? You don't even have a jump rope. <laughs> like, yeah. That doesn't make any sense. And, Tabitha's just, and then Tabitha just leans into just being a crazy old lady. She's like, well, would you deny a crazy old lady her little joys in life? All I have is my cat and my dog. <laughs> Ah! Ah. like okay lady and i couldn't figure out what whitney came back for because she didn't come back to get her tea leaves read because when tabitha suggested she's like hell no i don't want to do that so like why did you come back i don't yeah i don't know i don't get it she came back because plot <laughs> yeah they couldn't figure out a reason for her to come back so she just came back so anyway tabitha does eventually guilt whitney into just spending some more time with her sitting down and having her tea leaves read and in her tea leaves it says that um she will soon like experience the love of a man a man who will love her with his whole heart and Whitney gets very excited about this she's like oh, I just and she tells Tabitha well I know exactly who that man is I just started a relationship with I just got a new boyfriend and Tabitha looks at her and she's like well, the leaves actually say that this man is your brother. I, so I don't know about this boyfriend, but it's your brother that you will experience, who will love you. He'll love you with his whole heart because you're family. And then when he's like, I don't have a brother. And Tabs is like, well, maybe you've got a long lost brother. Maybe you got a brother you don't know anything about. And then when he says, oh, maybe my parents are trying to have another baby. Maybe they'll have a baby. And then if they have a baby and it's a boy, then I will have a brother. Is that what you're saying, the leaves? And Tabitha says, could be, but I don't think so. Because the leaves say that this man, this your brother will come between you and your sister. And then that's when the wheels really start turning in Whitney's head and she starts to come to a not so good realization. But she's still obviously kind of in denial about it but she thinks back to that fortune cookie that said something along those same it lines said, yeah it said almost the exact same thing which was you will soon experience the love of a brother which the fortune cookie which i don't know if you know this all of the fortunes that they got the same day at sally chin's house of noodles were manipulated by the other witch hecuba who has been like disposed of at this point oh, but yeah. hecuba did that and now Tabitha's doing this. Like, they're manipulating these fortunes. It's kind of true. Like, there's, they have truth to it. Which begs the question, does Tabitha actually create any chaos? Or does she just see it? And she's just, like, not trying to stop it. Right. Like, I was thinking about this. Before Charity came to town, Tabitha had been there for 300 years. And she hadn't ruined anybody's lives. I mean, as far as we know, maybe she did in, in the past time. But she's always talking about evil will reign will reign supreme in harmony. But you've had 300 years to do that. And nothing's happened. And these people seem to be thriving until now. Uh, well, well you know, maybe, maybe she, not thriving, but. Maybe she just wanted to wait because she knew what was going to happen. I can, she yeah. sees the chaos. So she's like, I'm not having to do anything. This chaos will create itself. 
I guess. But then Charity comes to town and all of a sudden she's like, I got to get rid of Charity. So that evil can reign supreme. I I, I don't know. She could have been doing all kinds of shit. And she it doesn't seem like she was. Because yeah. everybody was just living a regular life up until recently. I don't know then. Yeah, I think you might. Maybe. I think you might be on to something with that. Yeah, what was she doing? Maybe she was kind of like just uh, like in a dormant state, perhaps. I have. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but let's go on. So, so okay, so that happens, and Whitney is a little freaked out, and she leaves. So let's talk about now. We have to go back and talk about what happens when the men folk go into the house. Oh boy, this was great, fabulous, honestly. Oh so good (laughs) oh the effects the the drama the the hell effects are so good okay so the men folk go in the house and uh sam all the men go inside but then once they're in there sam is like none of you can go into charity's room only me i won't let any of you risk your lives i'm the only one going in and like then why do we even bother coming in the house exactly like why do you want to be the only one i thought this was about teamwork teamwork makes the dream work exactly he's the chief of police for god's sake where are the other police officers i mean Luis is there which makes sense miguel's in hell but you're the chief of police why haven't you called any where is your backup where is your backup why haven't you why hasn't anyone called anyone why hasn't anyone called anyone except their neighbors (laughs) That's like a good awesome. neighbor state farm is there state farm ain't even there they ain't even called the insurance company which they definitely need to call yeah this how oh I, I don't even know i don't know if insurance is gonna cover the fucking flames of hell opening up yeah. in your house. i don't know if that policy covers that shit yeah so they might be out of luck with that yeah they might i would just move. honestly i would move i would move would you want to live in the house? No, I think I was saying that because I think they was talking about like you know like the house like crumbling down and stuff like that, and I was just like, I would just move. I would move. Like after we you know get them out of hell, maybe I don't know, which doesn't seem like they actually since they don't care about these kids. I just say we all just pack up and leave, and they can just stay in hell since they <laughs> don't care. <laughs> That's what I say. Like if you already gonna have that kind of attitude, they can all just stay in hell. <laughs> I agree. So once they get up there, Sam's like fighting everybody. You can't go, uh, only me. Um, and then TC is like, well, if you're going to go tie this rope around your waist so that we can e- at least pull you back. He ties the rope around his ra- waist. Then um, Ethan comes up and he comes in up into the space where everybody is. And he's kind of watching this whole situation take place where Sam is saying, I won't let any of you wish- risk your lives. But he doesn't seem to be moved by it at all. And uh, then Sam is like having a conversation with TC and he says to TC, if I don't come back, please take take care of my kids and my family. Tell Grace I love her and tell Ethan I'm sorry I couldn't be there for him when he was a kid. When he was growing up. That was sad. It was sweet though. <clears throat> It was sweet that that's, like, on his mind. Yeah, like, he's thinking about his son. He realizes that he wasn't there and the effect that that had on him, especially now that it's come out that he is Ethan's father. Yeah. So, So I, yeah, I, um, I thought it was sweet. Uh, so he says that, sorry, Sam says that to TC, TC says to him, you shouldn't feel guilty about having missed out on Ethan's childhood because you didn't know that he was your son. And that is a fair point. It's a very fair point. Meanwhile, um, Ethan is having like a little conversation with Luis where Luis is like going to bat for Sam and telling um, Ethan that Sam would do anything to save anybody, but especially people he loves. And Ethan's like, if I was in that hell closet, he wouldn't come in. He wouldn't be trying to save me. The only reason he's going in there is to try to save his own kid. And he doesn't think of me as his own son. And he did. He wasn't there when I was growing up. And Louis says, he didn't know about you. Damn. <laughs> also, wait to make it about you, Ethan. Like, make it about you, Ethan. Like, I thought we was going in here to save these kids. 
they but, care about these kids yeah because like honestly i'm not gonna just blame ethan he's not alone in this literally every other character at some point in these couple episodes finds a way to make the situation about them absolutely so you know what that's very true <laughs> i won't even blame ethan they're all so self-centered they really are um so louise says to him you know if you were in there he would absolutely risk his life to save you and uh ethan's not buying it ethan's not buying it then the, they open the door to hell or to charity's room where hell the hell hole is and he, he, sam goes in with the rope around his waist then somehow somehow it defies all logic but somehow ethan gets pulled in by the demons and is being like held captive by two demons and they're trying to pull him into hell. He's screaming, wailing. Mama! And I would be too. You know what? That was a very realistic performance. Horrific. On his part. <laughs> Horrific. Can you imagine? Oh, oh my God. He's crying out. So he's being pulled, trying to be pulled, dragged to hell by the demons. And Sam is trying to save him. He grabs him, trying to pull on him, trying to pull on him, trying to save him. Luis says, I might have a, I have an idea. I, it's a long shot, but I got to go. I'm going to go get something. I'll be back. So then Louise and Chad go to the church and talk to Father Lonigan. And which Father Lon, why isn't Father Lonigan at the house anyway? He knew hell was there. Because he's useless. He was, th he really is. He <laughs> was there before when hell opened up in the first place. So I don't understand why he isn't there. Any like, why did he leave? Unless he was leaving to come bring something back. But he left and just went on to be. Do his priestly duties. Yeah, he just was like, at well, em at an empty church. That's one problem solved. Time to go back to my life. Like he didn't solve shit. So, he, Father Lonigan, um, Louise tells Father Lonigan that the whatever about hell, and Father Lonigan is in no way surprised because he had already seen it. Yeah, or not seen it because the man is blind, but he had already felt <laughs> hell's presence. And um, so. Father Lonigan gives him this tiny vial of holy water. The tiniest vial known to man. They they need super soakers. Like a Capri Sun has more liquid in it than that little vial of holy water 100%, had. 100%. It was like the size of the vial that has K's soul in it. Which, I don't know if you saw K's soul in the little chain thing. Anyway, K's soul is in a little vial and everybody who has been watching would know what I'm talking about. So. Loyal fans. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, yeah, he gives him that little holy water and then they run back to the house. Then Father Lonigan prays to the angel girl statue and is like, please help. You know what to do. He walks away. She comes to life and she's like, I know what to do. And then she goes and appears to Timmy and tells Timmy that he has to save charity. And, Jer and Timmy's like, well, I was already kind of thinking that. So, I mean, cause Timmy kind of already like has not a plan but he has been told the solution the wheels are spinning yeah for sure for sure but she really spurs him on again doesn't really do anything she just goes to appear to timmy doesn't really again she's not really useful she gives him like a pep talk i i she should she knows how to like shoot light from her hands and shit so she could have like gone to the demon room and like shot some of those demons or something that's true you know go and help on the front lines maybe the after, even after just telling timmy like hey you need to do something but uh go and help she just decides to do that and then she disappears again oh, maybe she, she's also agent of chaos she is she is an agent <laughs> of chaos she is an agent of chaos I, I, because think about it her helping would have like like so many like okay way less would have happened if she just went in there got the kids out Killed all the demons, you know, everything, everybody happy. But she was like, more chaos will ensue if I just tell Timmy to go and do it. Yeah, 100%. She is an agent of chaos, for sure. Absolutely. I, no notes on that. Yes. <laughs> um. So, uh, where were we? Oh, oh Lord. So oh, Timmy steals the, the, the demon claw, right? Meanwhile, Luis and Chad come back with the holy water. They start throwing the holy water on the demons that, that are holding um, Ethan. The demons start get weak, get weaker, and they let him go. And 
Sam grabs him, pulls him, pulls him out of the room. And then Ethan all of a sudden has, well, not all of a sudden. I mean, it makes sense that he would have this change of heart about Sam. <laughs> For right? real, I would too. I'd be like, you my best friend. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. But he has a major change. He has a major change of heart. He just speed Sam. runs his arc. Yeah, he does. Like, he does. He, does. He, he's out. He's dazed. He's confused. He's like, oh my God. And he's just like, Sam, you saved my life. You like, thank you. Ivy shows up at this exact moment. Come rush, rushes into the house, shows up, sees this, is brought up mm-hmm. to speed and is so grateful. Tell Sam how grateful she is, is hugging him. All of this. Meanwhile, outside Eve is having a conversation with Grace because like Naya just said, everybody's kind of making this situation about themselves instead of the children. So the situation in great for Grace right now and for Eve is Eve is telling Grace, you can't give up on your husband. You can't give up on your marriage. Uh, let me see. Let me find the, the fucking part where she said what she says. She says, um, and Pilar, oh, Pilar is there too. <laughs> Pilar is there too for a few seconds. She's there. Uh, she, the ladies are talking about how Grace needs to forgive Sam and be- because his life is in danger, she, ha- it's, it is incumbent upon her to forgive Sam and that she needs to believe in him. Then Pilar this is the one thing Pilar really did these whole episodes. Pilar like brings up Martin, which is her long lost husband, which I just feel like was a kind of a dirty trick. Yeah. It's just two different situations. It's two very different situations. She was like, I would do anything if Martin came back. It's like, yeah, but Sam really is here and really did lie. And also spoiler alert for all of you out there who maybe haven't seen it. It's, it's 20 years old. Martin <laughs> lied his ass off. So, mm. you know, but anyway, Pilar like brings up Martin, says, you know, I would do anything to have Martin back, blah, 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 whatever, girl. It's two different situations, two, ve- two very different situations. Like to you, Martin is dead. Sam is very much alive and has lied to Grace. And in Grace's mind, he's the reason that she lost her baby, which again, I just want to reiterate. Grace came home from the hospital two days after having her miscarriage. That's crazy. Well, they went back to the hospital. So she came home. They went back to the hospital because she fainted. And now she's back home. They Today is the day they came home after she came went to the hospital a second time. She's had quite a couple of days. Yeah. Yeah. Like, give, again, Grace. Not, yeah. I'll give Grace some grace, but I feel like it's unfair of her to blame the miscarriage on Sam. Oh, absolutely. Like, I, Sam didn't know that was going to happen. I absolutely agree. I, in she, also, Sam didn't know anything about um the Ethan being his son, but he did know that Ivy had been trying to get with him for basically two years now because that's where we are in this show. Yeah. Um. So now, he, did he he has been lying to her about that. Did he reciprocate? No. At any well, point? or yeah, a little bit, like Ooh, it, drama. He would say that he didn't, but there were multiple times where he definitely kissed her back. Like she kissed him and he leaned in a little. Oh, uh, hold up. Hold yeah. up. You know what? Okay. When we were watching the show, I was kind of like on Sam's side because I was like, man, you know, like she's being so talk a little bit louder. I, I was kind of on Sam's side um, when we were watching the show because I was like, oh, you know, um, Grace is being kind of unreasonable. But like, honestly, now that you've given me that like some more context because like well later on like sam i mean not sam grace is like you need to talk to ivy and like you need to talk about your relationship and tell her that it's over you know like you need to get all of that out of the way i don't only want you to love me you know that makes sense we're married at this point and sam is so adamant about it like being like no you know i only love you there's nothing to get over with ivy like i don't love her anymore but now that you've told me that i mean yeah there's something to get over yeah i agree i actually agree and we'll get to that in just a few moments because i do want to talk more about grace's like this is what you need to do to win me back because it's literally the simplest thing and 
Sam is pre- pushing back against it, which, mm, okay, weird. Um, so, but before we get there, uh, Eve is telling Grace, uh, she says, don't give up on Sam, Grace. Don't give up on love. Don't let evil win. <laughs> don't okay, let lady. evil win. And Grace is being like slowly <laughs> chipped away at, slowly beat down. And she finally, Eve is pretty effective and convinces Grace that she need that Ivy means nothing to Sam and that she should go and talk to Sam at this moment. Like, can y'all wait till later? Can we get this? Like, t- can we talk about this at another date? You know, I think like, the, I guess the thinking is if you let Sam know that you forgive him, it will give him strength. I guess I don't. And you did say that they don't know that Grace has powers, but we know that Grace has powers. So Grace's will, even though it might not mean anything to the other characters, it means something to the audience. Like, we know that it will actually help Sam. That's what I was thinking, too. I mean, that you, I said it, but yes, that is like was my thought on this, was that maybe what they were doing is that if Grace believes in Sam, then it her power somehow will give him power. Or strength. I, I don't know. Grace, give me strength. <laughs> <laughs> so um, she goes in. She goes back into the house to tell Sam that she forgives him and that she believes in him. But she happens upon this scene where Ivy is hugging him, thanking him for saving their son. She was like, Ivy kept saying, you saved our son. You saved our <laughs> son. <laughs> Sam, I love you. You saved our son and it was she was laying it on real thing yeah she really was and grace didn't like it she was watching it she didn't like it it made her feel funky and i understand why it did like she's raw it already took us so much convincing for her to go in the house to be ready to say to sam that she forgives him so. only to see that and then be like well everything eve said was obviously a lie exactly so. So, uh, Grace gets angry. She starts rethinking everything. Um, TC sees her, but Sam does not. And TC starts talking to her and says, you know, don't, don't read too much into this. Ivy is just grateful that Sam saved Ethan and Ivy means nothing to her. Just the same things that Eve was saying to her. Um, but she, this time it's not as effective and she, she leaves, uh, and TC tells Sam that uh, Grace actually had come to talk to him. And then Father Lonigan shows back up, thank God. And Finally. And he tells them, <laughs> he shows up and says, y'all all need to get out of here. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> and there's nothing they really have been doing. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. They haven't been doing anything. Also, before we get, like, a little bit farther, I just want to talk about there's like in that little scene with like Grace, TC, Sam, Ivy, all the folks, they have that little trope that I really hate where like something happens between two characters and then a third character is watching from the outside, this third character being Grace, seeing Ivy and Sam. Uh-huh. And from her perspective, it looks like something really bad, which, you know, I understand her feelings. And then as soon as she leaves, Sam tells Ivy, like, I understand, like, you're grateful and all, but I don't love you anymore. I don't want to be with you, blah, 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 blah. And she leaves right before he says that. And I hate that trope so much because yeah. if he just stayed, you would have heard it. Yeah. <laughs> like, but anyway, it's neither here nor there. I just wanted to. It's true. I just wanted to say that real I'm, quick. No, I'm so glad that you brought that up because I actually kind of forgot about it. So I'm glad that you brought that up because that actually rounds that out very well. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah. All right, I think now is a good time to stop and say a quick thank you, make a break, take a make a break, take a <laughs> break and say a quick thank you to our patrons. Thank you so much to Munashe, Marcus, Erica, Brelin, Lisa, Sid, Randall, Ashley, Hannah, Camelia, Amanda, Samantha, Jeanette, Eric, Jamie, Fantasia, Sean, S, Larissa, Mar- Maria, and Lisa. Thank you all so much. 
for being patrons. And remember, if you also would like to have interest in becoming a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash passions podcast and sign up for whatever tier looks best to you. Um, the Patreon, I, I'm going to start back up. I've started already putting episodes out a week early. And then we're going to be having some watch parties soon. Yeah, mm-hmm. there'll be such, such a good time, honestly. So, but thank you all so, so much for people who have been sticking with me through pauses, through, you know, grief, through everything. Like, thank you all so, so, so much. We really appreciate it. Love you. Yes. Got, look at that heart. Look at that heart. <laughs> all right. So let's go on. Continue on. Keep on keeping on. Let's get into the, into the magic. <laughs> more hellfire. <laughs> more magic, more hellfire. Bigger, better, stronger. Uh, so we were talking about race and ID and. Yeah, all that shit, right? Yeah, and then you start talking about how Father Lonigan comes in and tells everybody to get the heck out. Yeah, they can't do it anyway. Exactly. Father Lonigan comes in, tells everybody get, get the hell out. You can't do anything. Um, and they all leave. Good. They need to. They should have been gone. Honestly. Honestly, I, listen. If I did not live in this house or have a child that I would like to in hell, I would not be here. Like literally, the rest, the entire Russell family should be at home. I'm sorry. I know these y'all's friends, but we're talking about hell here. How deep does y'all's friendship go? Not that deep. That, I don't want to go to hell with you. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Kids, my friendship don't go that deep. We're not going to hell together. Mm-mm. You can go to hell. I'll be in bed. There's already enough people in hell right now. Three, three of them. Count them. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not equipped. I don't know what to do. No, nobody gets equipped. No one ever gets equipped. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So let's get when they do eventually get equipped. Mm-hmm. Careful. Yeah. Let's put like a thousand air quotes around that. <laughs> okay. So Father Lonnie shows up to everybody and get out. Um. Then when they go outside, Sam goes to talk to Grace because TTS told him, "Hey man, Grace was here and she saw everything that happened between you and Ivy and she didn't like it and she was here to like make amends with you, I think, and then left." And so he goes up to talk to Grace, who tells him, "Listen, man, I basically she says." I know you love me, but I don't think you love me with your whole heart. Which, uh, like, she's mm-hmm. like, I don't think all of your heart loves me, and, and part of your heart still loves Ivy, and she has an issue with that. But that's like, that's like realistic. Yeah, it's not like you can just erase the feelings that you once had for someone. And that love doesn't have to be like romantic love, or I'm gonna get back with you love. It could just be like, I still care for her. Yeah, like, deep as love, a person, you know? yeah. Like, I think it's, I think it's psychotic. I think it's psychotic. Because you have to love me and only me, and you can't love anyone else. You can't have love past anyone else. Like, I don't know. It just sounds a little weird. To yeah, me. I think it's psychotic to think that someone has to put to oh, love you and only you. And I think it's psychotic for someone to be able to like have love somebody and then fall in love with somebody else and forget all about the love they have before. Like they don't even care about that person anymore. Like things would have to end on particularly bad terms for something like that to happen. And uh, as far as I know, do they end on like that bad terms? I mean, Julia, in his mind, she chose Julian over him uh-huh. and married Julian. But he just has like some deep love for her, or whatever. But he insists to Grace that he actually does not love Ivy at all. He's not in love with her. There's nothing there for them. And that's the thing. There's a difference between loving somebody and being in love with them. That is true, right? Sorry. So he is clear with Grace that he does not love Ivy. There's nothing there for him. He loves her. Grace. He loves Grace and their family. And he wants their family back. All this. Grace then says to him, "You know what? I for me, I need for you too." Have a conversation with Ivy. You need to meet with Ivy and get some closure on your feelings and work through whatever it is that you still have left over feeling for her. And I feel like that's a fair ask. She's not asking for that much. She's not asking for much at all. She says, meet with Ivy, talk it through, and do that for me. And he like presses back. Yeah, he like he like blows up at her. Like, I should not have to do that because there's nothing to work through, there's nothing to resolve. I don't need closure because I don't love her anymore. And like in my mind, I'm like, okay, if all this really is true, Sam, then it should be so easy for y'all to do this. Not now, obviously, because there's children running out. But later, you know what I mean? Like it should be easy enough to do this, right? Yes, the lady doth protest too much. Sam protests too much. When she says you need to have a conversation with Ivy and put your past to rest, he's like, there is no past to rest. I don't love her. I love you. It's like, you're doing too much. Then that makes so, it look more suspicious. Exactly. It makes it look even worse in my mind. Mm-hmm. So um, <laughs> he's like, argue with her. And then I guess he eventually agrees. Is that where we end with that? Does he agree? I, I think he does. I think he kind of doesn't. And then TC talks to him later and kind of convinces him. Okay, yeah. So TC is the one who ends up having Not his wife. Doesn't listen to his wife. Mm. What a catch. <laughs> doesn't listen to his wife, but listen to his buddy, TP. Tells him, hey, yeah, maybe, maybe. Because TP says, you know, you're the one that's always talking about how first love is. Yeah, like, push yourself up for failure. Like, yeah, how first love is so important. You, you never forget your first love. love. Yeah, so TP's like, I'm really with, with um, Grace on this one. Like, do you need to put some stuff to rest with Ivy? Mm. And Grace is kind of very sorry. Sam is, of course, saying, no, absolutely not, but maybe right. You know, and so he goes over to Ivy and says, like, we need to talk. Right now? Can we do this later, y'all? Like, we don't see their conversation, though, right? No. No. Yeah, we're trying to end the, 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 that part of this episode there, or that part of that story there. Um, because, y'all, Sam finally, finally had called for help, y'all. And I thought, I was like, oh, is that a SWAT team? It was one solitary <laughs> member of, I would I assume, is a SWAT team that exists somewhere. But it was one member of uh, one person with a SWAT uniform on. And he had brought SWAT shields. Right, that's all he could get. Not any body armor, no helmets. All the men went to the SWAT truck and grabbed a shield, a cardboard looking shield that was paint, spray painted black that said SWAT. And then they proceeded to go into the house, which now is like fully engulfed in flames. Yeah, we don't see the house like slowly catching on fire. They just they go out, everything's fine, they go back in, and the entire house is just burning. Yeah. So. Um, when all of that is happening, Timmy, Timmy, this is where this is where we pick back up with Timmy. Timmy has absconded with the demon claw. He has made up his mind. He's gonna go save Charity. Oh, they make a thing uh, are clear. Um, have to make it very clear that the demon claw has to be thrown into the same portal where Charity was pulled down into hell. So he was not he would not be able to throw it into the portal that is in Tabitha's house. So they do explain that at least. Yeah. So he goes he he scurries on over to uh, scurries. Well, he scurries on over, and I'm gonna understand my language here in a minute. To the vent home, goes up the stairs, which again is not fully engulfed in flames at that point. But when the guys rushing, everything is in flames. So strange. Anyway, he goes up the stairs. He's about to go into Charity's room, opens the door, and then he feels a hand on his shoulder, and it's Father Lonigan. And Father Lonigan stops him from going into the into the room, and then he's like, "Who are you, small creature?" And that's why he's worse scurry because he keeps calling him small creature. I guess because he can't see, so he doesn't really know what Timmy is. I guess. So no, because he says he doesn't sense that Timmy is human. Okay, so, all right. Yeah, that's true. He doesn't even know what the thing is. He keeps calling him small creature. He keeps calling him small creature, and Timmy keeps calling himself yours truly. It's so funny. Yours truly. <laughs> but Timmy, I guess he doesn't want to uh, give away his identity. Yeah. Uh, but they then have this conversation where Father Lonigan, like, helps Timmy basically proceeds to talk Timmy out of saving Jerry. It's like the weirdest. It's like the opposite of a pet talk. Because <laughs> yeah. Timmy was fully committed to throwing the thing in the fire and getting everything solved, and then Father Lonigan just has to talk with his big mouth and is like, yeah, like, um, you were probably gonna die. Throw <laughs> this claw into the hell portal. Yeah, he tells him like, are you prepared that you will be
the sides, the top, the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> Demon, the big one, the bone. <laughs> yeah, so funny. It was very funny. They're screaming and yelling. And Tenny's just about to throw the claw when Tabitha comes in and catches him and pulls Scrabby's arm. Because she re realized, because she was like doing her stupid shit with the girls, yeah, trying to like, waste the time. time. And then realized that Tenny had absconded with her demon claw. But once all that had settled, she noticed he was gone. And the claw was gone and realized, oh my god, he's gone to the safe charity. So she stopped him. And that's what we ended this yeah, week. Yeah, it ends on cliffhanger. Yeah. That's what we ended this week. Um, Tenny was so close. I was so upset. When yeah. I, said, I was like, oh my god. And then she started something like, yeah, y'all, like this, uh, this, this is what happens. Yeah. Probably another episode of this madness. So probably got another like 10. I think we have another like 10 episodes of like the Hell House. Maybe eight. Eight. The Hell Plot. Uh, yeah, I think that seems like we, we're, we are definitely nearing the end of it. Of the Hell House. Because we've been at this for like one episode. Yeah, not specifically, not specifically the Hell House, like the portal in Hell, but the way the story started with um Charity, Kay and Miguel in like the mine shaft and picking up Hecuba and Hecuba being the catalyst for all this. That was that's why like two episodes ago. That's crazy. Like Laura was still on the show when Hecuba showed up when we started all of this. So it's, yeah. Wow. Oh. All right. So Naya, do you have uh, anything to say before we go? You want to share where any people can find you? Well, uh, if y'all like art, uh, digital art you can follow me on instagram that's basically the only active one i have you can follow me on instagram at coke b k o k e b i i underscore um on instagram so uh, yeah that's that's my plug all right and i will link that in the description of this podcast and y'all better go follow my niece <laughs> 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 um but she is extremely talented like I'm not just saying that because she's my niece. I really, she really is very talented. So um, also remember, you can always catch me on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, even though I don't really be posting on Twitter like that. I'm sorry, y'all, on all the people on Twitter. I'm sorry. I, I really be forgetting about Twitter. Oh, but man. at Passions Podcast or at Passions Pod on most platforms, you can find us. Just search Passions Podcast and find me. You can also send me an email at passionspodcast at gmail.com check out the website passionspodcast.com again y'all let me know if y'all using this website because i'm a, i'm about ready to like get rid of it I, I think i have another like it's it's good until like august i think but i might just let it go because it like it costs it actually costs kind of a, a big chunk of money and i don't know if anybody mm -hmm. is using it um so write me and tell me if you would like me to keep the website because if i get people who say like yeah keep the website i use it then yes if not then i'm gonna probably get rid of it that's fair. all right so remember you are my passion for life